an important message from Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of Vasoflux and Vasoflux for Men. If you're over the age of 35 and over the years you've eaten pizza, dairy foods, deli meats, or meats with fat, you are likely to have some degree of plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. This increases your risk of suffering a stroke or heart attack exponentially, and no one wants such a catastrophic event to occur. Introducing Plaqueout. Plaqueout is made of all natural ingredients proven to help. Dissolve clots in the blood. Remove calcium deposits and plaque from the walls of veins and arteries. Improve viscosity of the blood. Improve elasticity of the veins and arteries. Treat varicose veins. And prevent the reoccurrence of plaque buildup. For more information, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856. And remember, to help unclog veins and arteries, get the plaque out. I'm a walking mistake. I always tell my kids, be better than me, Kenny Anderson. Best point guard I've ever seen, Tom Kinchowski. A very hurt, lost soul, damaged, Natasha Anderson. Remembering Kenny Anderson is a roller coaster ride of opinion and emotion. You may reflect on his greatness or his many falls from grace as a person and player. Re remembering Anderson as the man I am today, I have to respect his story even more, seeing the circumstances he had to overcome. Beginning this feature, I'd like to mention that I like Kenny Anderson, as a player and a person. Society paints a picture of success as a man, player, and financially, and if you don't match that picture, you're considered a failure. After researching Kenny Anderson, I would like to send a personal message of respect, reverence, and the highest of admiration for the player he was, the person he's trying to become, and the humility he shows when speaking to anyone of any walk of life. A true legend in the game that sacrificed more than most to achieve the stature he has or had depending on how you see it. In the early to mid 90s, Kenny was the mold of what a point guard was supposed to be. He was smooth on and off the court, had the gift of gab you want from your point guard, perfect size for the era before point guards morphed into the size and athleticism they have today, could pass, shoot, and had the heart of a lion. Oh, and he was a lefty like myself. His vision was unmatched. His pedigree was certified being from the mecca of basketball and his ascendance in the sport was hasty and brought about an expectation bar to be one of the best point guards to ever live. Did he have a disappointing NBA career? Is he a deadbeat father? A failure post-basketball? Alcoholic? Well, I'll let you know how I feel today. One thing I do know is his growth was definitely stunted. Let's get into it. Kenneth Anderson, born October 9th, 1970. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Ash, get it, man. Kenny Anderson is from Queens, New York, left rack to be exact. As an amateur, he was everything to the basketball world across the nation. What he was doing can only be dreamed of replicating. He attended the famed Archbishop Malloy High School, where he was named to the All-State team four times, McDonald's All-American, Parade All-American, and New York Mr. Basketball. His record for career scoring is one that stood until being broken by Sebastian Telfair in 2004. Leaving high school, he was rated the number one overall recruit over Shaquille O'Neal. Anderson was looking forward to staying home and attending Syracuse as his college choice that included Duke and North Carolina. Upon visiting Georgia Tech, his mother, who accompanied him, was convinced that that was the place that would not only take care of her son, but also provide the best opportunity for him to continue his career after college. And she was right. He chose the Yellow Jackets as his choice school and the rest was history as they say. Stunt number one, youth, the pros and cons. Out of a hundred people, how many, if they could turn back the hands of time and become young and energetic again, not for any sole reason, but just to have that feeling when nothing really mattered. Your body was at its most prime self and it felt like the entire world was in front of you. 
How many of you would flip that switch? The thing about being young, outside of the physical positives, is that it also comes with being very inexperienced, ignorant, sometimes easily influenced, more susceptible to making mistakes, people from all angles preying on your youth, whether you're a superstar basketball player or not. Being young may seem fun and carefree, but being wise, composed, responsible, experienced, and able to better read your surroundings is something that's priceless to me. For Anderson, many of those cons he had to wiggle his way through while also expected to be the savior of his family, neighborhood, city, and state. Although he obviously at one point became that, it came with a price. Some of that price are things he still goes to therapy for today, which we'll speak on later. The rest of it costed him his longevity and a portion of his legacy. To me, Kenny Anderson should have been a top three to five point guard of all time. But because he was so young, inexperienced, youthfully emotional, and filled with so much love in his heart, especially for the people close to him, it made him make career moves that at the time were gratifying, but in the end, short-lived, and at some point, he went broke because of it. He entered Georgia Tech and was a star from the beginning, started all 35 of his games in the 1989-90 season, averaging almost 21 points a game and over 8 assists, shooting 41% from 3, attempting over 3 a game. He, along with sweet shooting Dennis Scott and Brian Oliver, all averaged over 20 points a game that season and led the Yellow Jackets to the Final Four, where they were defeated by the eventual national champions UNLV, led by previous stunted growth feature Larry Johnson. In that era, and especially in today's, a freshman coming in, having the success he had, would definitely have left for the NBA. But according to Kenny, he knew he wasn't ready mentally, even up to the point when he did leave after his sophomore season. He said he was having way too much fun and that he was comfortable in college. As a sophomore with Dennis Scott and Brian Oliver off to the NBA, Kenny was even better individually. He averaged 26 points a game and an amazing three steals, five rebounds, started every game but one in 38 minutes per. His assist numbers decreased drastically, not having his other 20-point scorers and a more youthful roster. The team also saw a decrease in wins and lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Kenny, although he admittedly wasn't ready, decided to leave school and enter the draft with a top three guarantee. He's to this day the most decorated Georgia Tech point guard of all time, and that's saying a lot. His move to the NBA, although beginning very successful, was filled with youthful decisions that led to more growth stunts. He was taken second overall behind Larry Johnson by the New Jersey Nets and in his rookie season backed up former Sonic Road feature Mookie Blaylock. He was the youngest player in the league that year. By his second year, he was beginning to show signs of the player he was drafted to be. He averaged 17 points and 8 assists in 55 games as the starter. In his third season is where Anderson was really staking his claim as one of the league's best point guards. It was his lone season making the all-star team after averaging 19 points a game and 9.6 assists. He played in all 82 games and a career-high 38 minutes a game that year. He and Derek Coleman led the Nets to the playoffs where they lost in the first round to the Knicks. After the season, head coach Chuck Daly resigned and new disciplinarian coach Butch Beard was hired. Immediately, Coleman and Anderson didn't appreciate his style of coaching and prematurely welcomed the idea of playing for another team. Kenny would have his run-ins with Coach Beard for disciplinary reasons, one day even missing practice without warning or call after being benched by Beard a few games prior. After, the coach made it clear that changes needed to be made, and at the same time, Anderson also made it known that he most likely wouldn't return. Whether serious or immature, the team took him seriously especially after he wouldn't sign his four-year $40 million extension at the beginning of the 95-96 season. The team who wanted something done earlier traded Anderson after 31 games to the Charlotte Hornets. 
In my opinion, New Jersey couldn't have been a more perfect fit for him as a franchise had he bought into what the new leadership were doing and also taking care of business off the floor. With the Nets in rebuilding mode, they could have used a steady point guard like Kenny, and also he could have used a stable situation where he could finally become the unquestioned leader on the floor. His unreadiness and immaturity also showed in a few other areas, such as Stunt number two, not staying in New Jersey. Elaborating on stunt number one, him handling the New Jersey situation the way he did, which costed him his time there, was another time I think his career took a really important turn. His 38 game finish to the 95-96 season with the Hornets after being traded was his lowest scoring stretch of his career outside of his rookie season at 15.2 points a game in 34 minutes. He was still a tremendous point guard at that point, only being 25 years old. But now, on a journey throughout the NBA and not having the comfort and stability of being on one team. As anything in life, if it isn't stable, it's hard to expect and receive optimal performance. Also in a sport like basketball, in particular the NBA, it seems when you're traded, a piece of that thing that makes you special in the eyes of teams chips off and leads to less opportunities given to you. Opportunities to make mistakes, opportunities to lead in the locker room having guys respect your word, and also opportunities marketing yourself. When a player that's been on one team had personal and team success there speaks, you tend to listen more carefully than a journeyman giving instructions. He would play 127 games with the Trailblazers, whom he signed with for reportedly 7 years 50 million after turning down 6 years 42 million in New Jersey. Again, a place that he could have made his own and shaped his legacy for the future. He was traded from there to the Raptors and in another questionable move refused to show up to the team because he didn't want to play in Canada. So he was traded again to the Celtics. Stunt number three, lost his work ethic. This stunt is one directly from Kenny's mouth, so I won't take credit for this. According to him, he just didn't care enough at times in the league. There were times when he knew he should get up and go work out and would decide to do something fun instead. Times he should have stayed in a workout for two hours and would call it after an hour and go spend time with friends or family and enjoy his life. Moves that for one gets very expensive over time because we all know having fun comes with a cost. And two didn't allow his skills to develop into its potential, which is why you see his production over his prime either stay the same or decline. At this time, Kenny was allegedly a full-blown alcoholic that drank before practices and games, stayed out all night with practice the next morning, which led to him either missing altogether or not getting better, which at that point is slowing your growth down and allowing others with less talent and more work ethic to catch up. Also at that point, Anderson is well on his way to building his eight children lineage with five different women who all expect payments from him on time and in some eyes at excess. Million dollars here, million dollars there, and your earnings begin to dwindle before you even know it. Mansions here, there, fast cars, spending time with friends where you're the number two NBA draft pick, so expected to always pick up the tab. And with a big heart like Anderson's who love having people around, saying no is never an option. Then there's his mother, rest in peace, whom he would spoil no matter what he was going through. She calls and says send a million, Kenny's at the Western Union or bank handing it over the next morning like clockwork. Kenny made over $63 million over his NBA career and today he's allegedly worth $800,000. That's worth not cash in the bank or in some Nike book bag. Immaturity, kids, baby mamas, youth, and losing what got him there are the main things that stunted Kenny's growth and caused him to relatively go broke, while also losing his spot in history as one of the best NBA point guards ever. Is he one of the best in New York ever? No question. In college, absolutely. 
but in the NBA, instead of having a Hall of Fame career as expected, he averaged 12.6 points a game and 6.1 assists. Numbers you would have never guessed would be the case back then. He would go on to play for a handful of teams after Boston, including a stint overseas where it was forgettable seeing one of your favorite guards look like he was just there. Work ethic is the most important thing in life. All great men have that quality. When you lose it, you become an unfamiliar person, to people watching and to yourself. After his playing days, Kenny's life slipped into depression. Therapy sessions, hours reflecting on what he has been and what he did in the past, more than what's in his future in life. Forget basketball. I always say, strive to always give full effort and you'll be compensated for it. A lot has been documented about the relationship with his kids and whether or not he's a deadbeat dad and those things I would never speak on here and disrespect the man like that because his journey is his bed to lay in. As a man, I can respect his privacy in that matter. Another thing I struggle to bring up, and if you've made it this far, it'll be a little extra insight on the man Kenny Anderson is. At some point in his youth, he was molested by a man in the neighborhood whose house he and friends would go to to play games and do other fun stuff until things got physical and scarred Kenny for life, which is what he to this day goes to therapy for. Who knows what that did to his psyche? Maybe it's why he drank so much or found it hard to keep relationships or made it feel as if in this world he only had himself. In his movie Mr. Chibs, he also speaks about living in the same room with his mother and her boyfriend and watching her be sexually assaulted right in front of him. For these reasons, man, I can't judge Kenny at all personally. Everything said today is mainly about basketball and said to help someone else in the future. I have a ton of respect for Kenny Anderson and wish him nothing but the best. Hopefully he can find another coaching job somewhere after losing the high school opportunity he had because of a DUI. Because his knowledge and leadership is so underrated and much needed. To this day, I haven't seen a better basketball speaker and motivator than Kenny Anderson, so it's crazy to see him not out there more sharing his amazing story. All in all, salute to a legend, love ya Kenny, hopefully you take this video well, and best of luck in the future OG, King Kenny Anderson. Peace, it's your boy Jason's gonna grow, and I'm out. Also, if you have some time, I'm inviting you to check out the new website. Many have been asking for a cash app or how they can support the channel. Honestly, you watching the video and getting to this point of it is more than enough. But if you want to go the extra mile and get some pretty cool gear at the same time, new winter hoodies have just been released. It's a part of a project I'm working on, all original designs. For now, there's the gold tips along with the red and black. A play on words that exalt the game we all know and love. Stunnergrow3.com if you want to get some gear and show some support. It's your boy JC Stunnergrow. I'm really out this time. Chill.